Hi, I'm Al Cohen. Uh, I'm the Director of Pediatric Neurosurgery at Johns Hopkins, and I wanted to share with you a recent case we had here and use that as a way to uh, give you some updates about pediatric brain tumors. And this is a, a two-year-old boy, almost three, that we cared for recently at Johns Hopkins. He came to us with about a month of progressive headache and vomiting, and he was seen at an outside urgent care hospital uh, where they diagnosed gastroenteritis, possibly sinusitis, and gave him prednisone. It didn't work. He got worse, uh, and uh, he had persistent symptoms and became unsteady when he was walking. So his mom knew that it was something that was wrong. She brought him to a local uh, hospital uh, where they obtained a CT scan. They found that he was obtunded, uh, and uh, he had a large mass on the CT scan, so they sent him to us at Johns Hopkins, and we saw him in the emergency room. He was obtunded, really sleepy, uh, and he was in moderate distress. He couldn't lie flat, and we needed to get more imaging. Uh, he had bilateral abducens palsies. That's the sixth nerve. The eyes were turned in, and those are very sensitive to pressure. They're the longest cranial nerves in the body, and we knew he had a big mass in the head. Uh, so uh, this was the CT scan uh, that he had at the outside hospital, uh, and you can see there's this large mass in the posterior fossa, that dark area here. That's a big tumor, and it's causing hydrocephalus, blocking uh, the ventricles. And uh, here is the enlarged ventricles up higher on the CT scan. And uh, so he came to us, int uh, we intubated him because he was sick, placed him on dexamethasone, and uh, then we placed an emergent right frontal external ventricular drain. My partner, Dr. Robinson, uh, and Dr. Alkindi, our resident, did that. Uh, that brought his pressure down. The pressure was very high, and we were able to go ahead and get an MRI of the brain and the spine to try to find out exactly what's going on. And here's an MRI of the brain. It's an axial cut like this. Uh, the nose you can see up in the front, and this uh, white and dark area in the back uh, is a big posterior fossa tumor. It's a cerebellar tumor in the midline. It's quite large. Here's a side view. You can see that big white and black area at the base of the brain. It's filling most of the posterior fossa, pressing on the brain and brain stem. Uh, here's a coronal view looking right at him, and you can see the big mass in the posterior fossa. It's the white and dark area, and the ventricles are enlarged with hydrocephalus. The brain is inside the skull. It's in a closed container, so all this is going on at the expense of the normal brain. Here up higher, you can see the enlarged cerebral ventricles, and both the tumor and the ventricles are causing significant increased intracranial pressure. So we needed to do something about this, and we decided uh, to do a posterior fossa craniotomy uh, with a microsurgical resection of the brain tumor. The little boy with a big tumor inside uh, his head, which is encased in the skull in a closed compartment, that tumor and hydrocephalus are there at the expense of the normal brain. And this is a, a view, this is the uh, cerebellum below, below the transverse sinuses. It looks like a narrow area, but there's more tumor than brain in the back of this young child's head. And we had uh, to put him prone. Here he is on the OR table, and that's our chief resident, Kurt Lehner, outlining the incision that we're going to use. That star is an image guidance. We have frameless stereotactic navigation. It's like a GPS system for the brain to help us uh, find the most uh, safe trajectory to get that tumor out. And here is the patient lying. It's a, sort of a military tuck position. The head is on the left and the body on the right, and we're standing on either side to do the operation. Uh, we open up the base of the skull and make an incision in the scalp, and now we're looking uh, at the bone. We've opened the, uh, we've opened the skin, and the top of the head is to the left, and the, the body is to the right. And you can see that line is the top where the transverse sinuses are. We're going to take that piece of bone off uh, with a power drill here. And now we're looking at the dura, the tough lining, the fibrous lining of the cerebellum. And you can see inferior, the left cerebellar hemisphere, and the right on top. Again, we're looking on the side. Rostral, or the head is, uh, the top of the head is to the left, and the body is to the right. Then we open the dura, and the rest of the operation here, this is the tumor uh, under high power. We're looking at it through the microscope, and we make a small incision in the cerebellum balance area of the brain and work under the microscope and core this thing out uh, like coring out an apple. And we have a video. I'll show you a video of this operation. It goes for about a minute and a half showing how we dissect this thing.
So that was a video of the surgery, and what we did is we used an ultrasonic aspirator under the microscope uh, with image guidance, and we cored this thing out from inside out. Uh, here's the post-operative MRI. This white area is cerebrospinal fluid filling the area where the tumor was located, and we were able to get the entire tumor out with a small opening in the cerebellum. And here's the ventricles are now smaller than they were. Uh, and here, preoperatively, you can see the contrast-enhanced area, that white and dark area, that, that's where the tumor was. And here, postoperatively, that dark area on this uh, cut is fluid. It's the normal cerebrospinal fluid. Or here, uh, on the left, is before and after surgery. You can see the big tumor uh, here, and then you can see the area of cerebrospinal fluid that fills that smaller area as the brain starts to fill up. So we were happy with the resection. The surgery went well. He did well postoperatively, and actually, uh, the surgery was about nine hours long. Uh, after a few hours, when he woke up, he was up running around playing with his t uh, toys, his monster trucks and dinosaurs. He's a really tough little kid. Here is the pathology. We had a frozen section, and this is the permanent pathology. It's a representative view of a pilocytic astrocytoma. Uh, this is the lowest grade tumor that we have in the nervous system. Now, this is an unusual picture, but I use it to show that uh, the tumor is called a pilocytic astrocytoma because it has pyloid cells. And pyloid means hair-like. And these under the microscope look hair-like. They're bipolar hair-like cells, and that helps identify this low-grade astrocytoma. Astrocytoma comes from the word uh, astrocyte, and the astro is star-shaped. And under the microscope, when the pathologists look at this, these cells have the shape of stars. So this is a pilocytic astrocytoma. And here, uh, we see Rosenthal fibers, and one of the hallmarks of a pilocytic astrocytoma, these pink areas are eosinophilic granular bodies, again, uh, telling us that this is a low-grade, grade one tumor. And here he is. We did this shortly before Halloween, and we used a designer head wrap. We made him into a pumpkin. Uh, he was up and running around after surgery. Uh, he helped get his family through the operation. He's a tough little guy. Here he is recuperating. Uh, it's a big operation for a little guy, but it was a happy case.